Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have some Dollar Tree Spring Farmhouse DIYs for you. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. Also, I wanna welcome all the new people and I wanna tell all the old people hello. I appreciate every single one of you so, so much. And I cannot wait to see what we have in store for the future. So let's jump right into today's DIYs. Okay guys, so to start off, I take a sign from Dollar Tree and then I take four small stir sticks and cut off the handle. I also take four large stir sticks and cut off the handle as well. Once I have the handles cut down, then I sand all the rough edges and I stain 16 large popsicle sticks. And these are the jumbo popsicle sticks that I got from Walmart. If you use the large popsicle sticks, then you're gonna have to use more, I believe, because these are a lot wider. But I did have these in my stash, so I figured that I would utilize them because this piece is pretty large. I go in with my favorite stain Jacobian and I just use a regular foam brush from Dollar Tree. These are cheap enough that I can just use them and throw them away. And then I set them outside to dry because the weather has been absolutely gorgeous here. Next, I take this sign from Dollar Tree and I paint it white. And I don't give it a really thick coat because I like some of that, um, brown from the sign showing through that way it kind of looks like distressing i printed off hello spring from my computer and i will leave a free printable down below it will be two or three pages because this is so large so i did just want to mention that i take my arteza graphite paper and i just transfer that image on and then i go in with my arteza black paint pen and i go over all of that wording i want to put out a little disclaimer per usual you guys i have kids and they're in the living room having a good old time so if you hear them that is why Next, I take my Waverly Antique Wax and my chip brush and I just distress this entire sign, focusing on the edges and then I do go on the inside of the sign and distress that as well. Next, I line up two of the large stir sticks on my self-healing cutting mat. That way I know that they're nice and square. And then I take one large popsicle stick, not the jumbo ones, the large popsicle sticks, and a small popsicle stick, and I just glue those together. Now, when I was putting this together, I would definitely advise not to use the smaller popsicle popsicle stick just use the large one it'll hold it just fine because when i went to glue this to the sign because there's only a very small lip to glue this to it kind of stood off of the sign and i used gorilla hot glue so it would not budge so i definitely just recommend to use one large popsicle stick to glue that together and you want to glue it as close as you can to the edge next i take my small stir sticks and again i leave a little bit of a gap on the side and i glue those to the side of this sign also um, i did cut these to where there's a gap at the top and the bottom that way the large stir sticks have something to glue to once I had those glued down, then I went in with my large stir sticks. I just ran a bead of hot glue at the top of this sign and then attached it that way. And once I had both of the top, both of the large stir sticks glued down, top and bottom, I'm, I guess I'm not making much sense. Once I had the top and the bottom glued down, then I did flip this over and reinforce it with some smaller stir, uh, popsicle sticks. That way I know that this isn't gonna go anywhere. I'm sorry, you guys, it's been a long day already. <laughs> Next, again, I just reinforce it with some hot glue on those edges. I just didn't want it to come apart or anything like that. So a little hot glue never hurt anybody. <laughs> 
Next, I go in with our other small stir sticks and I put a bead of wood glue on one side and hot glue on the other just because I want this to stay immediately but I want the glue hold to last and then I did just glue them on either end to make a square pretty much. Next I take our large or our jumbo popsicle sticks and I glue these down on an angle. If you saw my um, shutter shelf video then you already have this technique down. If you haven't seen that video I will link it in the cards in the right hand corner but I just glue these on an angle and then I take the smaller popsicle sticks and while the glue is drying I just let them sit in between that way these sit up like a real shutter and for the right side I did have to just cut some pieces of a small popsicle stick and put them in the gaps because it didn't want to stay up as good as the other side and then once again I just uh, reinforce that with some hot glue so that those little wedges would not fall through. I also wanted to mention that while I was gluing down the slats I did constantly flip it over to make sure that they were even so I would glue it down I would flip it to the front check it while the glue was still hot and then I would move it around if need be. Next I go in with my white Waverly chalk paint and I just dry brush all on the dark pieces of this wood. This step is optional. I like the weathered wood look but if you don't like that you can skip that step. I then go in with some greenery. I had a pile of it with you know white and yellow but I'm just a neutral spring kind of girl. I don't really like the bright pinks and reds or bright pinks and all that I just would rather greenery and white that is what my home is so um, if you like bright colors then you can certainly glue down some brighter florals that's totally up to you and then I just made a very simple bow glued that to the middle of where the greenery was and then that quick and easy you guys you have a gorgeous spring sign you could also make one of these for summer that says um, hello summer or whatever you like it's so versatile and I am in love with the way it turned out and I know you'll let me know in the comments down below what you think Hey friends, so I would like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people to explore new skills, deepen passions you may already have, and get lost in creativity. Right now I'm currently taking a few courses like watercoloring and hand lettering essentials for beginners. My favorite is the hand lettering essentials for beginners with Mary Kate McDevitt because I have been wanting to learn hand lettering for so long that way I don't have to print off my stuff and then trace it on and I really love that the classes are short and to the point with interactive content so that you get a one-on-one -on -one with experience and you really feel like you know the teacher teaching you. You can do these classes in your spare time or you can do them one right after the other. I like to take like one course per day and I have found that it really helps me with trying to do hand lettering. So Skillshare is curated specifically for learning. There are no ads and they're consistently adding new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. Plus, it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, and I thought that you guys might want to know that if you click the link in my description box, if you click the title of the video, a box will appear. That is the description box. The first thousand people to click that link will get a free premium trial. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring today's video. 
Moving on to the next DIY, I take eight of these picture frames from Dollar Tree. They are the ones with the galvanized metal in the back. I love these so much, you guys. But I just start by taking a very small screwdriver and removing all of the clips. Next, I take my stain and originally, I didn't even look at the back of these and I figured that like the backing wouldn't come off and then I figured out that it would. So I just take these out of the frame. That way I can uh, stain the inside like edge, if you will, um, without getting it all over that galvanized piece. Once I had all of those stained, and there's a few reasons I did this. Now, I like the wood naturally the way that it came, but I did want my X's to match, so that is why I did opt to stain these, but if you're trying to make this a really quick project, then I would just leave them plain, but that's totally up to you. So you guys sometimes I don't work efficiently I put these all back in the frames because generally when I do X's I just measure and stick it right like in the frame but I figured out that it would probably look better if I took them out and glued it straight down to the metal piece and then stuck it back in the frame so if you do stain them don't stick them back in the frame just yet um, you're going to want to do this step first. So I just take my large popsicle sticks, again, not the jumbo. I lay them out on this metal piece and I trace over the corners, cut those out. And then I also lay down the X piece and mark where the um, one piece is is cut in the middle if that makes sense so you have one whole piece and then you have two pieces for the next side so you can see what I'm doing here I just lay it out and I mark it with my pencil that way I know exactly where to cut it surprise surprise guys <laughs> next I go in with my chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and I just distress all the edges as well as that X now once again this is optional I know that some of you aren't too fond of the dry brushing but a lot of you are so um, that's the beauty with DIY you can switch it up change it up to suit your decor now to glue these together all I did was take some wood glue and some hot glue so I put wood glue on the edges and then hot glue in the middle and you want to make sure that those little pieces that are holding this together are as flat as you can get them now they're not going to be as flat as they came because of the um large popsicle sticks for the X but just get them as close as you can and then you just glue the frame to get all the frames together and that was it you guys I love the way that this turned out I will be changing the flowers out for each season I am a greenery type of girl so um, I do like the white flowers for spring I did pop in some very pale pink flowers and that is okay for my decor but like I said I'm a neutral kind of girl and I just love the way that these turned out so so let me know in the comments, would you dry brush these or would you just leave them plain? Would you stain them? If you redid this project, how would you do them? So if you guys are new here, my name is Melissa. I love to do all things crafty on a budget, especially Dollar Tree DIYs. Farmhouse decor is my specialty and much more. So if that's something you're interested in, I would love if you would stick around, become part of the family by clicking the red subscribe button, and then right next to it, tap the bell and all, so that way you're notified every single time I upload. That way you don't miss another Dollar Tree Farmhouse moment. I also thought that it would be really fun to do the earrings of the week. It is a new thing for me. I wanted to try it out and see what you guys thought. So this is the earrings of the week. 
Let me know what you guys think and which type of earrings are your favorite. I got them from Walmart and my daughter was like, mommy, look at those earrings. So that is what gave me the idea. Let me know what you guys think of the idea down below. And with all that being said, let's jump right back into today's DIY. Okay guys, so for the last project, I take three of these Easter signs from Dollar Tree. They had these little feet hanging off the edges, so I did just remove those feet. They were really easy. I just pulled them right off, and then I glue all the seams down with some hot glue and some large popsicle sticks. I then take my half inch square dowels, and I measure out the frame, and then I take out my little mini miter saw, and I love this thing, you guys. I get questions constantly about this thing, and I get questions like, is it worth it? Um, do you love it? You guys, I love it, and it's so worth it. Um, you can use it right on your desk. It doesn't make a ton of dust or anything like that. I just cut this right on my desk. I unplug it, put it away, and I just take my Dyson and vacuum it right up. And it's so much quicker than pulling out my big saw and attaching the dust bag and blah, blah, blah. So I definitely think this is worth it for small cuts like these dowel rods. Um, all of the stuff that I'm using like my finger sander and my square dowels my mini miter saw they're all in the link in the description box in my Amazon store next I take my uh, finger sander and I sand down all the edges and then I stain all of the pieces now you guys this is a new camera this is a new setup I guess I hit record and I missed the part where I measured out the entire frame because we're gonna do something different than just a plain frame. I framed out the picture in the middle as well as the sides. So once I put it all together, I'll explain a little bit better. But I had this sign, I had put a piece of paper on the back, a scrapbook paper, and I never ended up using it. So. I just flipped this around and I took off that glitter on the wording. It is a square sign from Dollar Tree that I got back um, around fall. And then I painted the back with some chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree. And I used my wood grain tool and I love the way that this turned out. Look how cool this looks, you guys. But because the chalkboard paint is kind of shiny and the back or the front side of this was shiny, when I used my chalk couture transfers, it did pull it up because these are sticky. And as usual, I love to show you guys my mistakes because I'm not a perfect crafter, you guys. It is what it is. It's no big deal. These transfers wash right off. So even though some of it pulled up, I just took it right to my sink. I washed it down and then I just um, really focused on the back and I got that extra paint off so what I did was flip it over painted it black with some black waver with some ink waverly chalk paint and I did just transfer on my wreath that way now this was only just a little um, eucalyptus piece so I did transfer a whole wreath and that is why I used that circle cutter that way I could have a perfect circle when I transfer these on and then I just went in with this little greenery piece just to make it look a bit more full in this same transfer there's this beautiful flower um, there's a few different kind of flowers but I thought that this one matched the flowers that we put in our little uh, vases before that we just made so I did opt for this one and I did opt to do them in white and I just randomly placed this down and transferred that on and I will leave all the materials that I used with my chalk paste and the transfers in the description box in one link but keep in mind that you can always add and subtract from that list if you just want the transfer or you just want the paste it's totally up to you but I do like to put it all in one place for you 
Next, I just took some white ribbon and some burlap with a black edging and I glued them together and then glued them down. If you need to know how to make a bow, I have a whole video on a on 11 different bows and how to make them perfect every single time. So I will leave that in the cards on the right hand side as well. So once I have those glued together, like I said, I just glued them right down to the top of this wreath. Next, I just take some hot glue and I glue the frame down. Now, when I glue the frame, I always start with either the top or the bottom. I then glue the sides down and then I glue the other piece, just so that way I know that this fits together really nicely. And here is the part I thought I hit record when I was showing you how I cut these pieces, but I did just measure a piece at the bottom of the picture, a piece long ways at the top of the picture, and then I measured two little pieces for the top, two pieces for the sides of this picture, and then two pieces at the bottom. So that way it would frame this out in a very decorative look. And then once I had it glued down, I did dry brush with white and black Waverly chalk paint waverly chalk paint good lord you guys you know i can't talk but if i were to cut out every time i slipped up that would kind of be fake so that's why i leave them in you guys because i'm real and i'm raw and it just is what it is i'm human so anyway i hope you guys enjoy these projects and this video if you haven't subscribed already make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then tap the bell and all to be notified when i upload let me know in the comments down below that you're still here by leaving a orange heart or just a I'm here comment. Also, if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely gorgeous. You are worthy and I love you with all my heart and soul and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.